Hello and welcome to Film Seizure. Welcome back again. This is our second week after our summer hiatus, I guess we'll call it. And we're summer yatus. <laughs> and we're going to continue <laughs> covering The Godfather. And we have Godfather 2 this week, um, which we'll get into here shortly. But who do we have here with us? We have The Godfather of McDonald's French Fries, Jeff Arbuckle. <laughs> His mouth is full of fries. Yeah. Um, <laughs> he's got, uh, but it looks like it looks like Rando, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> and Jason uh, Oliver. Yeah, I'm here too. We were just talking about oranges, and then you say the Germans love oranges. Yeah. Yeah. So it's true. So that ties in. Yeah. Somewhat tentatively. <laughs> I just scared Chuck with, with the little monster face. Yeah. I was like, and he, he ran off, and I was like, no, no, come back. I'm going to go get my pesticides to kill you. Oh, no. So, yeah, Godfather 2, 1974, which I think was probably, Jason will know more about this, immediately greenlit after the success of, success of The Godfather. Yes. Oh, by the way, you are Chuck Moore. I am Hi, Chuck, Chuck Moore. Moore. How's it going? I'm here, too. But what's interesting is that it was not the next thing that Coppola made. Oh, he made the conversation in between the two Godfather movies. Another, you know, whatever. <laughs> yeah, it was it was it was nominated for Best Picture alongside the Godfather 2. Oh, 1974 was one fucking hell of a year for Coppola. Yeah, I've never. Well, at least I don't remember seeing the conversation. Is that another? It's very good. That's Gene Hackman, right? Yes. Yeah. It was kind of um, Coppola's riff on uh, Blow Up. Oh, okay. Which also kind of falls into the same category as De Palma's Blow Out. Yep. All three of those movies go really well together. Okay. Yep. Then I'd like to see that because I enjoy it. You should. The other it's very two. good. Yeah. Um, uh, and G- yeah, Gene Hackman is the lead in that. Was he nominated for Best Actor for that? Probably. I think he probably was um anywho yeah so the godfather part two was a re- re- like immediately starting to be developed but there was a script that needed to be written right right and puzo and and coppola collaborated on that script but robert evans was out um the movie was made at paramount it was distributed by paramount but it was in coppola's contract that robert evans could have no control whatsoever Interesting. Because Coppola found Robert Evans meddling, he's called it, to be to be tiresome. <laughs> to be I find your meddling to be tiresome, yes. sir. He did not want any of that Evans meddling in his part two. He wanted total control. And he got it. And he made a great picture. Yeah. Um So again, it's it, it all goes back to Godfather and like who did what and who influenced what and we will never know the full story. But the result of it did end up with Coppola getting his way, and and wow, Evans it might even be unprecedented, but Evans was head of the studio and could not have any creative say in the making of The Godfather Part Two. Is this like he went over his head to Bloodhorn or something? Yes. Like? Yeah. Yes. And um, but honestly, this was also kind of around the time where Evans was starting to not want to be head of studio anymore he because he wasn't he wasn't making any money yeah um he's producing all these you know hits like love story and and godfather as a, as a head of studio but he want he's not on the posters right like he says in the show yeah he wanted the the um a little bit more of the the credit right but he but at the end of the day he wasn't making any money he was getting his studio salary he wasn't getting any of the points. No points on the movies. Right. And, and, and this was a day, this was kind of an in-between part of the studio system where, you know, the old studio heads like Zanuck and th- those guys, they they owned part of the studio and they were the studio head. So they had points on every film. Evans didn't. Um, Bluehorn, his contract with Bluehorn sucked. And um, so he said, well, I, I want to start producing. So they gave him a deal where he could still be head of studio and produce films, and he like was, Chinatown or right, and and he would have then percentage points on on those films. Um, so that so that's what he started doing next. While while Coppola was making Godfather Two, Robert Evans was producing Chinatown, which is also like some of his Chinatown stuff is discussed in the offer. Yes, yeah. it is. Yeah, um, and that's just an incredible story in and of itself. Like the 
the, all the creative strife <clears throat> behind that. Um, it's also where Evans and his relationship with um, Jack Nicholson really came together. They were best friends until the day Robert Evans died. I mean, probably his best friend. In, in, I mean, he had, Robert Evans had a lot of good friends, but Jack Nicholson was probably the best of his friends. Yeah. I mean, just and, um, Evans He's, essentially discovered Jack Nicholson, like pulled him out of like the obscurity of of um making films for like sci-fi Roger Corman, whatever yeah um and put him in a picture right before um easy rider came out so i forget which picture it was but um jack was, nicholson was it the trip no that was earlier i think oh, okay. um, i think well that's that's right in there yeah it was he was <clears throat> he was making all sorts of weirdo films like that um oh yeah uh, the, the psych out but um, it was but it was as good as Easy Rider was, it was still kind of counterculture, right? It was um, Chinatown that really legitimized Jack Nicholson as a serious actor. Um, and the rest was history from yeah. there. And then yeah. we had Albert S. Ruddy, who produced the first Godfather. I wonder if there's more to that story about why he left, but apparently he went on to do his own picture, The Longest Yard. Yes. Is what he wanted. So he's out of the the picture right to say the picture again um i've only i've not done a whole lot of research on that relationship but i did read a quote where coppola has said i don't remember already being on set at all interesting <laughs> yeah so either coppola has kind of shut out a lot of the memory of those people to take the glory yeah. or they're embellishing on their involvement yeah well obviously it's probably Evans, it might be a little bit of both yeah yeah, yeah. probably is right um but anyway yeah so so godfather part two went forward um the shoot on the conversation must have been probably the like i don't know i must have been a pretty easy shoot because two years later godfather two which had to be no small undertaking no it's almost like two movies well yeah, well, yeah exactly shot two once. movies um a big budget at least for the day <clears throat> i think it was um 13 million dollar budget I think I read though that it, the total budget may have ended up over twenty. <clears throat> no one really knows. That's pretty typical for a, a Coppola picture. Is your budget going to start to to balloon? Yeah. Um, certainly did with Apocalypse Now. Oh yeah. Um, the bigger the bigger Coppola's ego, the the more difficult he was to to work with. <laughs> Well, I mean, until yeah. that came to a head but um and it came to a head with apocalypse now yes yeah so but, we we have two movies here right yep godfather 2 is split into so michael corleone has taken control of the family like shown at the end of one but and we again all, we start with a well his story starts with a family gathering yes almost an exact mirror of the first he's most definitely this time he's at um what is it what is the gathering it's his um son anthony's first communion yes, yes. first communion thank you it's a very catholic and thing. it's at tahoe so he's moved the whole operation from new york, new york. to um to lake tahoe yeah yeah because he is most definitely and we find out one more movie down the line made a shit ton of money in casinos yes so he's pretty much like, in a way, this is kind of him shifting out of the gangland style. Yeah, instead of illegal gambling, he's in legal legitima gambling. legitimized right. gambling. He's, he's legal gone gambling. half legit because he's still in a frowned upon business. Sure. Yes. Oh, and he's getting he's going to get pressure very soon in this in this timeline. Yes. yes. Um, and concurrently, you have the story of the rise of Vito Corleone whose family you have kind of another mirror shot of michael's wedding in the first movie you have his father's funeral Vito's father's funeral right which is very similar to the wedding scene the way that it, they do the procession and everything mm -hmm. it's kind of interesting but Vito's father had talking about someone in the Costa, no Costa Nostra. Costa Nostra. Right. And he mm -hmm. ends up getting killed for it. His older brother swears revenge. He ends he up getting, getting killed. killed for it. And Vito's mom goes to beg for for his life, saying he doesn't even speak. He'll right. never do anything. He's not going to hurt you. But the But the Don is what he'll grow up to be 
Yes, he will come back for me. He will come back. So, yes. So, and, and then guns her down. Um, and Vito runs away. Yep. And then he gets help to get put on a boat and gets processed through. Um, Because his last name is not. They're not actually Corleones. No. They were no, given the that. Yeah. yeah. They were given that at Ellis Island. Right. Well, he was. I mean, he, he was. He went across to Ellis Island by himself. Nine-year-old boy. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Oh, and that's our first appearance of Sofia Coppola, too, in this series. She's on that boat. Yeah, she's a little little girl on that boat. Wait, I thought she was the... Um, no, she's Michael's daughter. She can't be... She's... Her first, she, her, her, no, her first appearance is in The Godfather. She is the infant that's being baptized. Oh. Well, so she, real she didn't life, do that so very well either, huh? <laughs> she got a lot of people killed. <laughs> she did. Oh, God, yes. Yeah, um, she did. Nah, anyway. We'll come. We'll come back. But did you to notice? Her. Did you notice how quickly they mentioned the mafia? Yes, it was like a slap in the face. Almost. It was like oh, it was like text on the screen. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's like holy shit. Well, I guess that whole thing is not a problem anymore. No. All the, yeah, all, explain all, that. All the, all the gangsters loved uh, the God, first Godfather. They didn't give a shit anymore. So the Italian American League, I think, is what they're called, was run by Joseph Colombo. And this again, we're taking most of this from the offer. Yeah. <clears throat> It's a true story, though. It, but it, yeah, I think it I is. Mean, I mean, I don't know how much of the gangster stuff is true, but the the but what you're about to talk about is true. Yeah, the yeah. Italian American League was trying to shut down the Godfather. They didn't want it to go out because they they consider themselves family people, like we talked about earlier. They're protecting themselves, their family. This is their only option. They're not criminals. And right? They didn't At like least. how they were portrayed in the novel. Yes. Yeah. Mm. And they basically coerced Al Ruddy, at least according to the story, to say. You can't have the word mafia in the picture. Okay. You could show this the way you're going to show it because apparently he shared the script with them and they were like, okay, yeah, we can get behind this, but you can't say mafia. So they scrubbed the script of that. So it is kind of interesting that in the very beginning and Joseph Colombo is dead at this time because he'd been assassinated in real life. Um, What? He survived. But then he died. But then he died. Yeah. It was a long assassination. Yeah. I think it took a while. It's a slow bullet. Yeah. Because <laughs> I think he still died from com- complications pro- yeah, of, potentially, of yeah. the attempt. Yeah. Um, yeah. So <laughs> immediately Francis Ford Coppola is like, hey, mafia. We're gonna yeah. Mafia. I, I don't know the story behind that. But um, but I there is was also supposedly a secret screening of The Godfather before it screened for anyone else for the mob in new york yeah. and, well, no, I, and and it was it was beloved yeah oh yeah i mean you know it's like this is this is our real life you yeah. know they, it's not it's not glamorized necessarily right. it's not overdone it's not uh, uh what's the word i'm looking for um exaggerated right yeah. and it's very familial i mean I, that was the whole point uh, coppola wanted to make it's a family story yeah not, not a gangster story yes yeah oh and we, ne- we didn't really touch upon this but it is really really important you know, we did kind of talk about this in another light last week, but it's really, it was really, really important for everybody making this movie that there was actual Italians. Yes. A- Italian Americans in these roles. And yes. they wanted an Italian American director. Right. Um, and, and, and they couldn't find anybody to, to make the movie in the first place. Coppola didn't even want to do it because he, for the same reason everyone else turned it down, is because I don't want to glamorize you know, violence in Italian Americans. It's like, this is sends the wrong message. It took a lot of convincing and it took him talking to Puzo and them kind of hashing out an idea for yeah. him to come on, ta- on, on board. Yeah. Which changed the book. I think quite a bit, quite a bit. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> um, yeah. But so, Michael Corleone, he's at the baptism. Go ahead. Yep. Go so, ahead. yeah. So now we were, we started in 1901, the first, the first communion, but yeah, right. We're at the, we're in 1901, with Vito's beginning, his origins of becoming who we saw Michael or uh, Marlon Brando play. Michael Corleone, as you were saying, is now kind of, he's in the position his father was in and pretty much at the pinnacle of the, of the family business at this right. point. And he wants to expand. He wants to expand. And this is, I mean, it's, it's very quickly mentioned in this. By K, it's like, you said in five years you'd be legit. That was seven years ago. Yeah. yeah. So here we are now in the 50s. We're in the kind of in the mid 50s ish. And, um, you know, and Michael's starting to realize in one regard, he's hardened quite a bit. But in another regard, 
he's i think he kind of realizes that maybe he's in a little over his head with this going straight business because he's still even though what they're doing isn't necessary i mean the running the casino stuff maybe isn't all that illegal but he still has his fingers in all of the other stuff he still has he still has soldiers right essentially the senator which is there's kind of some symmetry here too because if michael had gone in his father's footsteps he would potentially be the senator that's shutting michael down yeah right at this point because the senator's like i don't like what your family does you guys are posing as legitimate people but when in fact you're criminals so you're gonna pay me yeah he still yeah. accepts the 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 money well, yes. he, well he, he's he's almost more guilty of the criminal extortion than michael is at this point yes which is the irony right it's it's so it's not that he thinks that michael's a criminal it's prejudice well that's how he tells him right yeah. right but, but, it, but it's not that he's a criminal that bothers him it's that he's an italian criminal yeah yes because it's important later in the hearing when he recuses himself yeah that i don't want this to be about italians they're some of the most patriotic right. people he's a, hypocrite. he's a hypocrite he's a hypocrite he's he's this he's, is he's prejudiced it is very realistic yeah absolutely you know i mean we see this because he was showboating at that point uh-huh. we see that showboating going on all the time especially nowadays yep. in our congress and he's doing it and it's the exact same thing it's just he's just saying slightly different words michael even gives a look like, yeah yeah yeah, it's like, yeah yeah oh it's great when um when they bring in the other guy and he ends up not giving his testimony and they have to adjourn and uh, Robert Duvall stands up and is like, oh, we need a, 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 a an apology. There should be. Yeah. yeah. It's like, man, they got him by the balls at that point. Yep. Um, but, you know, I mean, it's it, it, it's all of all of those scenes later in the movie that were, you know, way down the line here in this movie um, with the with the hearing with the Senate feels very true yeah and it feels very accurate as to how these people kind of position themselves you know and they and they're um with the attempts at gotchas and attempts at um what's the word i'm looking obfuscation 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 yeah okay sure i I say it when i can't pronounce something perfectly i just put a little italian spin on it perfect hey it's obfuscation (laughs) (laughs) sorry that may have been a little italian racist sorry it's not stereotype stereotype, Stereotype, yeah yeah. not racism (laughs) stereotype Stereotype. it's a it's a broad stereotype it's a broad stereotype (laughs) but But anyway yeah but but again like i actually wrote this in my notes early on this movie is about prejudice it's also it's also um uh, reinforcing some of the ideas from the first movie that they do this because they don't they didn't have much better options and this is just where it's built to right and they're still up against michael's still up against the wall when he legitimately wants to take the business to a, a legal um legitimate place he's still hitting walls he's like, being like demonized for right. what he's done to get where he's at right so he can't get out of so it. So he can't get out of it. He's, he's like dug a hole that he never wanted to be there in the first place, but he still can't get out of because of the prejudice that he faces as an Italian-American. But he does make the senator an offer. He's like, no, you can pay me. I think he says you can pay me $1,000 and I ain't giving you shit. And that's pretty much it. You'll, you'll, pay, you'll pay the commission fee or whatever. Right. Yes. Yeah. Which they do set him up a little later. Yeah. But at the same time, well, this, so again, we're at a celebration, but we have another Italian-American there who's using this opportunity to see Michael because he has a problem with two brothers, I think, that yeah. are related with Roth in Miami. Oh, yes. And this... So, Patangeli, I think his name is. Uh, yeah. So this also mirrors something in the first movie, too, because at one point, somebody does go to Vito and asks for a favor and he's like i can't do that yeah i think he was like why don't you uh you know somebody somebody did something wrong i want you to kill him and Vito's like no you already went to the police one you should have just come to me and two i can't just kill a guy yeah you're you're coming to me if you were a better friend to me i would maybe take care of right so but and then that starts a whole 
there's there's the first sign of something that's not going to go well in this situation that yes. Vito's in. And this is the same thing here because um, Michael stands up for a friend of his father's, Roth. Yeah. Roth. Yeah. And so that pisses off the guy that's you know it's like oh, you, you're gonna you're gonna take this jews you know uh side instead of mine or whatever yeah right and it, that that creates and again it's you know a little bit of racism there or a little right. bit of prejudice there yeah because the like, expectation that michael would stick up for an italian not for a jewish friend of the family well yeah but there's also a, there's also an issue with michael has left the bronx and that's he's he's kind of abandoned it yeah um because he doesn't want a part of of that world anymore because they they are now going down that drug path and, surely. and, and yeah. frank panted panted jelly who is this character he, he's like you have a responsibility here you know this is what's happening in your neighborhood that you left um but you yeah you won't stick up for for your people you'll take the 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 jews side over ours i want to make a point here about panted jelly um <clears throat> that character was initially supposed to be Clemenza. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Um, but so so you have it. You have in the Vito storyline. You have um, Tessio and Clemenza, right? They're they're Vito's first two guys, and um, Tessio betrays him and the betrays Michael in the first one. Yeah. And it was supposed to be Clemenza betraying Michael in the second one. His, Vito's two oldest guys, right? Um, but Clemenza, the actor who played Clemenza, didn't come back. He had he had disagreements about the script. He wanted to write his own lines. He kind of got a big head. And they said, all right, well, you're out. We'll just replace your character with another capo. That's one of the biggest failures of the story of this movie, in my opinion, is that the past is here. Why doesn't it inform the future better? Yeah. Why doesn't it inform you on what Clemenza might do or what Roth, like Roth should have been in the past so you could learn mm. who these people are right. as the future stories going on? And I'm I, like, think, I was I think, waiting for that the whole time. I think time. if the right. character had intersect? been Clemenza, it would have been a lot more powerful. Yes. Like, and in fact, I, there was a point in the story. I was like, oh, shit, is that the same guy? We thought that too. And first. I looked it up. I was like, oh, it's not the same guy. And then I looked a little deeper. I was like, it was supposed to be the same guy. <laughs> <laughs> it, would have made the, it would have made the story so much better. In uh, take this movie's was... best picture away. Yeah. yeah. No, I mean, as good as it is, it could have been better. Right. Yeah. Right. Why? Right. You're, you're talking about this is why the first one is better. Because, it, you know, the first one connects all its thoughts. Right. This one misses the opportunity to connect a, a really good dot. You didn't have to connect it, but it would have been even better if they connected it those dots. It seems like a weird reason to. Like, I get it. Maybe you want the same actor, but the story should take precedence there. Sure. And that is obviously the better choice. Yeah, they should have, have, they should have just recast. Yeah. Um, I agree. Uh, what's interesting, do you, do you notice who um, Pentagelli's uh, number one guy is? He, he was also in the first Godfather, but in a lesser role. It's uh, Joe Spinell. Oh yeah, oh, nice. yeah, yeah. I noticed that because it's like, yeah, he he got shot and got right back up. Yeah, that's Joe Spinell. That's Joe Spinell. Uh, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. That's, this is our uh, what the third time, third movie of his that we because he's in Rocky. Yeah, he's in Rocky. Yeah. Yep. Um, no. Um, also, uh, our. Uh, the, what's the uh the you got michael roth jelly roth 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 is lee strasberg yes. yeah uh he is an incredibly important figure for a lot of actors of this era um strasberg was um just one of the greatest teachers of drama yes of that time yes he was um the strasberg school yep so yeah he's uh he's a big deal mm-hmm Great, great, um, great part. Yes, the Hyman Roth part. Oh, the and the line of um, wait, the, the, what is it? He's got cancer, right? Yeah, I think and it's so. Like, it's something like that. And, and Michael even says it's like, yeah, that that's an illness that's been killing him for a long time. Yeah, because <laughs> he always he always falls back on, uh -huh. oh, I'm dying, I'm dying, I got to give up the, you know. But he's been doing this for like years. Yeah, <laughs> he, he's been playing the weak man forever. Yep, yep, yeah, while still making powerful moves. Yes, um, but Michael has at least early on in this movie, he's taken a position of defending him. He fully believes in him. 
whatever his father saw in him, he is carried forward. Yeah. And really, he's a bit blinded by what he wants to do in the future, which is to take the business to Cuba where there's no taxing. There's no like they can just make money hand over fist and yeah. not have to worry about the government anymore. But when he's down there, he sees things that bothers him. Oh, yeah. I mean, the rebels and the, you the know. rebels could actually win and that would totally destroy my investment. Yep. He also already has starts to, to suspect Roth after there's an assassination attempt on his life at his house the night yes. of the first communion. Yep. I, my question is why why does he suspect Roth at that point? I don't think he does, but I'm not sure. I think he does. I think I because he I, sends he sends um, uh, Pantagelli to go to go to the twins because he wants them to make nice. Yes, and I don't think I think that's because. But I think he's also not not to make nice, but to to get information. I think he knows it's one of the two, and he sends them both against each other to find out who does what. But I don't think he fully realizes what Roth is until. He's well, he in de- Cuba. he definitely tells Pantagelli that he suspects Roth, and he tells Roth that he suspects yes. Pantagelli. Yes, right. But the he's way playing that, against the yeah. But the way other. that Roth attacks Pantagelli, it, it makes you think at this point that Michael at least was setting up Pantagelli. He was right. Trying to make right. Him I guess I guess I guess it is a little bit obscure at that point whether or not Michael had Pantagelli killed or attempted right. to be killed or or was it roth right. however the characters that are going to kill pantagelli say michael corleone sends his regards right but right. you don't know who it's, it's a bit of that word again obfuscation obfuscation well you say it for now on obfusa s-c-a-t-i-o usa you oh yeah, but but it's but you and you can as an audience viewer you can understand why you would believe that Michael believes that uh, is, I can't say his damn name. I'm just going to call him Frank. All right. Frank. <laughs> Frank Antetigelli. Antetigelli. Yeah. Sure. Why, why he would suspect Frank. Right. Because that's who he had the altercation with the drunk altercation. And just before just beforehand. And, and Frank is even like, I've had a little bit too much to drink. <laughs> and he leaves yeah. <laughs> with <Yeah>. Joe Spinell. <laughs> <laughs> like you had more than a little bit too much to drink, buddy. Well, because isn't he the guy? He's going around and like, um, he's like, "Why aren't you doing this uh, Italian song?" Yeah, and, yeah. exactly. And then, and then they play like the the stereotypical <laughs> one, <laughs> and he's like, "Ah, yeah." yeah. <laughs> and they play "Pop Goes the Weasel," and then they turn yeah, it into it. "Pop yep. Goes the Weasel." Yeah, right. and he's like, "Oh, they're just making fun of me." Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> so, so yes, it's definitely. I think you're led to believe one thing. Yes. Yeah. And Michael knows, either Michael or Tom Hagen, one of them knows, like, these people are going to be dead on the grounds. We have someone internal that's attacked us, basically. Right. Yes. Right. But, he, but Michael knows he didn't call that hidden. So he's like, Roth, at that point. He's like, there's the only one who could have done it. Uh, yeah, I don't remember. No, yeah, because he does say Roth is the only one who has the, the leverage. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Or whatever he said. But, he but still, that's the point. Yeah. yeah but yeah. he still continues his business with them. Well, yes. But he's he wants out. He definitely wants out yeah, after he's Havana. His money back. Yeah. He's, he hasn't brought the money. Yeah. He's he's playing his cards very close to the vest. Yes. And he sees. I I think not only does he does he realize that the uprising, the revolution in in Cuba is going to be bad for business, but he also sees it as a way out. Right. Yeah. Yes. He also is. Saying, well, yeah, it's his excuse. Yeah. I, I mean, don't like this. Yeah. Right. I think at this point, it's good to know that he also in ways suspects his brother, brother Fredo is being involved. Yes. He carries on kind of in part with this charade to figure it out. Who actually betrayed me in the family? I need to know. Right. Fre- Fredo's not very smart. Um, <laughs> and Fredo is acting like he doesn't know people in one scene, and then oh yeah, and then the very next scene he's like, oh yeah, he told me about yeah, this place, right. and he's standing right behind and you, Michael's Fredo, like, you idiot, Michael's yeah, you broke my heart, Fredo. Yep. That's when he tells yeah. his his heavy whoever it is, um, Callo or I can't remember the dude's name. Yeah, Cal- uh, his 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 bodyguard. Yeah, yeah, yeah he says it's him, something like Callo or something. He sends him to kill Roth, and we're getting kind of well ahead right or are we right in- well yeah, I, th- we, I think we're okay though. yeah no we're okay because i mean we're i mean again we're talking about two different movies happening within one yeah yeah and at the so, same time vito corleone has grown up to be robert de niro yes. oh man and yes. he's Bobby so D. good he was supposed to be in the godfather 
Yeah, he um, got traded, right? Well, yeah, exactly. He he. There was a movie that Al Pacino took. I can't remember the name of it. It's got a stupid title. Um, <laughs> it's like a comedy, a comedy um, action movie or something that that Pacino ended up taking the lead in when they were waffling on him about being Pacino in Godfather because Robert Evans didn't want him. Blue Horn didn't want him. Took a lot of convincing. Yeah. Um, that's one thing that, that Robert Evans admits to. He's like, I was dead wrong. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Um, but, uh, so they ended up finally Robert Evans decided that he needed, he needed, they needed Pacino, but then Pacino wasn't available. So they um, went to um, to negotiate. I think it was MGM to negotiate a trade. Um, mm. And the, on the offer, it was essentially Evans who did the negotiating. But in the book, the kid stays in the picture. Robert Evans sent Sidney Korshak, his the myth, the legend, Sidney Korshak, the, the fixer, the fixer, um, to make to get it done. He was also a lawyer, and they traded and a they book traded De Niro, and De Niro. And, yeah, a book in De Niro for Pacino. for Pacino. Hmm. Yeah, the rights to a book. I can't remember which book. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's how that happened. Pretty wild. And um, it worked out perfectly to get him back as Vito and two. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. um, interestingly, at the time that he wins the Oscar for this, I believe he's only the second person to win an Oscar for speaking something other than English. Oh, is this huh. the only character? This has to be the only character that's won an Oscar, but f- being played by two different, two different people. Two different people, right? At the time, also that is true. Wow. Um, I think Sophia Loren is the only other person at the time. Course, of course, now since then, you know, like Roberto Benigni. Roberto Benigni, and, yeah. And yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, but I believe I think it was Sophia Loren was the only other person. That's um, interesting. But um, yeah, he's um, really good. In this, and again, it helps solidify what I said last time about Vito, which is I think Vito could be very, very reasonable to do to have any kind of relationship with. Yeah, right. I don't think he is overtly mean like Sonny or like Michael in this one. Michael does some pretty, he does some pretty, pretty nasty stuff in this one. Um, He's not, I mean, he, he seems like a, a, a man of his word and of honor of some sort, you know. Unless and, there's something he wants and he has well, to put a gun to your head. And it can't be <laughs> understated to how patient Vito is. Exactly. So, like, he if you. He 25, 30 years for revenge in one aspect. <laughs> yeah. Right. Like he's yeah. a very patient, deliberate person. But if you are, you know, if you're just an Italian living in a slumlord apartment, He's going to help you. Yeah. Well, that's and not ask for anything back from that woman. Well, maybe not. Maybe not. I but mean, his, his after he after his he, whole world is built on not asking for stuff back, but it being implied. Sure. Yeah. Yes. yeah exactly. I mean, that, that's made very clear after he's taken control of the neighborhood. After he's he's killed Fanucci. Um, that's a that's a great scene. He, too. It's great, but it's it mirrors the first scene of the first movie, right? Where right. he's behind a desk and people are coming in for favors, and they're, he's trading favors. That's how he builds his legacy. Sure. It's how he built his power. But I uh, but I, I I sincerely doubt there is too much he can expect that little old lady is going to well, get back. I agree. I agree. So I, I, think, yeah, but, but I, think, I think he's appropriately. He has. He has um, right. These are the people. Proportion. Right. These yeah. are the people. This woman is the gospel. They're yes. the people that spread the word She's yep. Matthew, about Mark, Luke, and John. Yep. Yes. Yep. yep. Yes. Hundred percent. Yep. She's the one who's going to build the goodwill. Yes. Yep. Yeah. She'll. She'll. She's. She's more valuable than anyone. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And yep. um, yeah, exactly. And it's important that Mama Cor- Corleone is there for people to go to, so that they, if they're afraid to talk to Vito, yeah, they can put the good word in with Mama. Yep. Well, and then mama's she, the heart kind of exactly yep. and then yep. she takes it to Vito. if if you've touched her in some way yeah she gets the she gets the she gets you the place at the at you know the appointment yeah i do want to yep. touch on this like you talked about the don finucci and actually that's probably coming up soon but don yep. finucci kind of in a way creates Vito mm-hmm. by attacking other italian americans as an italian american and Vito corleone's like why would we be hurting ourselves? Right. We need, like the whole idea of 
if we're not going to be protected, we must protect ourselves as right. born in that moment. Right. right. Yeah. Why are we you giving know. him two hundred dollars? Yes. Right. Yeah. He should be on the same team as us. Right. Yeah. We should all be at, here. And this, for one and this and why, blows and why, his and why guys' minds for protection. Yeah. Right. It's like, what do we need protection? We're not from? even getting protection from right. him. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. This blows his his buddies' minds. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, well, that's just the way things are. It's like, so. Yeah, yeah that doesn't have yeah, to Tessio, be that way. Tessio is just like, we just pay him. We keep doing what we're doing. I mean, what's the problem? It's like, no, he's... He's not doing anything yeah. for it. We're paying for nothing. Exactly. And Clemenza is one of those people because Clemenza had earlier thrown him a bag of guns after maybe he robbed a bank or whatever the hell he did. And, and Vito Corleone protected the guns until he came back. Yep. Yeah. And he's like, do you ever look in the bag? He's like, nope, I don't concern myself with other people's business, which is a lie. He knows exactly what Clemenza did. <laughs> right. But um, but he doesn't he doesn't stir the pot. You yeah. know, he's not he's not stirring the uh, the trouble. Yeah. Right. But they go steal a rug together. They do go steal a rug together. And yeah. boy, that family is so happy to get that rug. <laughs> they got <laughs> you know, the little kid it. playing on it. Yeah. yeah. I, li- I li- that's, that's sunny. That's, yeah, that's sunny. Yeah. Yeah, it's sunny. It's perfectly De Niro scene too. The yes. way he acts so much with his face in that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you're not sure at first like which way he's gonna go and then he's like yeah we would like the rug <laughs> yeah <laughs> well the uh yeah and then you know it's the this because it's when he's talking about like venucci and it's like why are we giving him the money? I'll go talk to him. I'll make him an offer he can't refuse. Yes. And that's I knew, the first time that he's. Yeah. That was so it. damn predictable that that was coming, unfortunately. I was like, he's about to say it. He's about. He said it. You know, it's his but thing. That's his thing. Yeah, yeah. It's his thing. It's his thing. I forgot. It's his thing. <laughs> yeah. It's, his thing. it's cool. It's he's got, there's got to be a first time. Yeah. yeah. If, they, if, they, if they make yet another movie with another veto, he better say it in the trailer. Yeah. Right? yeah. <laughs> in multiple languages. Um, anyway, so he, you know, he just he just sacks up to the guy and it's like yeah it, because i think there's only a hundred dollars under my hat yeah. he's like yeah you know, i don't have it and the guy's like yeah you got balls and walks off well he wants to make him a um he wants him as an enforcer right yeah he's like but he had other ideas he's probably. gonna enforce his own plans oh yeah he does <laughs> yeah because then the guy walks and i i love that this don is like the classic like Full of hubris, guy walking around the streets in a white suit, hanging off of his shoulders, yeah. the white hat. Given uh, money, he's most clearly taken from someone else to who, some cause. Right. It's all showboating. It's all showboating. He's um, uh, he just he's walking around like the cock of the walk. Yeah. Well, De Niro's following him up on the roof. Yeah. And go ahead. No, Sorry. no, go ahead. I was just going to say, De Niro has like... Vito has a perfect plan here because he convinces Clemenza and the other guy like hey give me the money to give to him I'll make sure he accepts this money but in reality he's getting, getting paid close. Well, no, he's getting paid by them to take care of it. Oh sure. They just sure. don't know it yet. Okay, yeah, and then yeah. they realize like okay we we just paid him to take care of our problems. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. And now he's in power right? Yep. Like, yeah. That's he's he, he's the guy now. Yeah. He, he knows how ahead. to fix it. Um, so yeah, and this is a, this is one of those memorable scenes in this movie. Uh, you know, he's going to shoot him. Cuts the light. Cuts the light. He wraps the the gun in the towel. Shoots him a couple of times. The, the, the towel, towel catches on fire. Yeah, which is, I mean, that's what's going to happen. Yeah, it makes sense. Um, yeah, it's like that makes perfect sense. And uh, and away he goes. Yeah, it was pretty fortuitous that he waited for the fireworks and it happened at the exact right time. <laughs> but he probably knew that's, you know. I know. I'm yeah, I mean, he knows what he's doing. Yeah, He's Vito Corleone. Leave him alone. But yeah, this is it, like <laughs> from this point forward, Clemenza and I can't, I don't know why. Is it Tessio? Tessio. Tessio, Tessio yeah. yeah. Clemenza and Tessio. Um, are un- in his employ now, basically. Yes. Cl- Clemenza is the guy who. Threw um, the guns. Who, who, he's the take, leave the gun, take the cannoli guy. Yes. Yep. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> um tessio is a, a vagoda who got yes. right who re- portrays michael yes <clears throat> which again this story would have made a whole lot more sense if fat pat and jelly was actually if frank was actually clemenza yes i know it would be much better but what are you gonna do what are you gonna do what are you gonna do i'm gonna like it less yeah that's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna like it less i just pretend it's him okay okay um, well let's just do that then. yeah um <laughs> michael's i i guess we so let's kinda, go back to michael yeah so well uh, one one small okay so basically we have seen the absolute rise of 
Vito. We're not done with him yet because there's still one more thing he needs to do. Correct. But it goes well, back is to when Michael. he connects the worlds later. Exactly. Not, yeah. 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 Because then he decides to go back to Sicily. Yeah. He sees the guy who killed his family, who's just this decrepit. So we can finish his story. Yeah, we might as well. Um, so Michael is so Vito is set up an oil export business or import business in the U.S. Yes. Uh, olive oil. Olive oil. <laughs> you, said, you just said oil. Oh, yeah, olive oil. It's, it's like, me. wow, he got real he big worked, real fast. He worked his way up, as mentioned in the third. That Italian petroleum. Yeah. From this oil, like, he All was a hair. stockman. Oh, no. He, no. <laughs> no, okay. I'm saying they put it okay, in their hair. Okay, Senator. No, I'm saying they put it I in their know, hair. I know. Okay. <laughs> so he worked his way up in this oil, olive oil place. Then he owned it. Then he goes to the family who killed his parents. Yeah. Killed his whole family. Killed his whole family and sets up a deal yes. to import their oil into the U.S. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then... Um, he takes his family all there to Sicily, to Corleone. To- yep. And uh, he uh, literally guts the guy. Yeah. That looked real. It looked really bit. gross. I mean, yeah. it's like that guy, that old guy was probably like, I'm going to die soon. <laughs> De Niro, go ahead. Do it for art. Yeah. Do it for <laughs> Yeah. It's a bit Kevorkian. Yeah, uh, it is, and but it it's so jagged. It's yeah. like it's it's visceral. And it, 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 it yeah, and it it didn't feel like it was easy either. No, he, he like he went in and, he and had yeah. to yank it. Old yeah. man meat is tough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're 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 learning that yeah. every day, aren't we? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, you no, know, so yeah, so basically at this point, he you know he just got back. Uh, on everyone and he is undisputed heavyweight champion of the world of the, of well soon will be because he'll <laughs> he'll grow he'll grow into brando yeah so yeah he will be a heavyweight so yes while while his rise is complete we are seeing um we're seeing a significant retraction in power we're seeing michael have to flee cuba his brother has betrayed him um, you have basically three different, three kind of characters who are, have all been in Havana, who have all fled in different ways. Fredo, Roth, and Michael. Yes. They all get out of, out of Havana because the revolution has started. The um, president of Cuba has abdicated. Yep. And um, That's a lot easier to say. <laughs> and, uh, that power vacuum will now be filled by the revolutionaries. Um, it's the beginning of, well, of, of, communist of communism in yeah. Cuba. Yes. Yeah, and um, Michael goes to Mama Corleone and says, "Yo, did 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 Papa ever have to think deep within his heart? You know, like and, he, and she's like, you know, she tells him how Vita would. Uh, I mean, he doesn't say, you know, that this is all about um, Fredo, but he just says." You know, he just asks her about it, and he and she explains the way things are done, right. and he tells her flat out, which is the whole, pretty much the whole point of this movie, is that times are changing. Yep, and he looks scared, like he's 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 kind of cornered, right? And um, the Corleones are either going to carry on. Or everything is about to be pulled out from beneath, uh, from well, under yeah, him. It, it, to to parallel Vito's rise to power, Michael ha- doesn't have the gospel anymore. He doesn't have the people in New York aren't on yeah. his side anymore. Yeah, yeah. He lives practically people, by himself in Tahoe. Yeah, he has nobody. He has nobody touting the name of Michael Corleone anymore. He's, yeah, right. His name is bad in everyone's mouth almost. Well, yeah, because especially because to some people. You know, he ran out on a deal. Yeah. And 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 there's o- other things that have... Obviously, you kill heads of the five, fa- five families and Mo Green. There's going to be blowback to that. And, and especially with the Mo Green one. Exactly. Because he built Las Vegas. Yep. That he's now he running. He's a friend of Roth. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Right. And Roth puts no... You know, he there's no dull point in what he's saying about how, yeah, you probably shouldn't have killed him. Mo Green, I don't care what you think he did or what he did do. You know, you 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 over you overreached. Yeah, on that Roth, one. Roth Roth counted Mo Green as a friend, took that very personally. Yep. 
wasn't just business to Roth. But he made it sound like he was willing to continue he, with the business. He did. Yeah. Yeah. But um not true really. But yeah, I think I think when Michael waffled well, I, I, I guess it all goes back to why did Mo Green or sorry, why did Roth try to kill Michael at the beginning of the movie? And it was for Mo Green. It was for Mo Green. Yeah. So so it was never about business. Yeah. And he's just keeping them close. Yeah. Um, take his take his money. Potentially take his money. And then kill him. Because maybe he was like, all right, well, I got to go at this another way. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, he's um, on top of all of that. Which is why he had to set up um, Clemenza. Not Clemenza, Frank. Yeah. Make right. Make that look like it was a Michael Well, we job. pretended it was yeah. Clemenza. Right. Yeah. Yes, we that's <laughs> correct. <laughs> There's some, I have some questions there whether <clears throat> Roth told them to leave Frank alive or if it really was broken up by that cop that walked oh, in there. Oh, that's a good question. Like, it's, it's very unclear and maybe for the audience as to why he's left alive, but it would be really be nice to know if Roth did that on purpose or not. That's a really good point. It doesn't seem to really work. Unless he's left alive, does it? Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. The whole the whole plan to bring Michael down, yeah, involves a court case, and and, and, and obviously right, Spinell so. thinks it's it's Michael as yeah. well because he's he's you know backing Frank. Well, he's yeah. the first person you see talking to the Senate. Right. Exactly. And yeah. speaking of the Senate, or is it the House? Is it House or Senate? Um, I, I, I thought know. it was Senate. I think it, it, it's a. Congress. <laughs> yeah, it's Congress. Speaking yeah. of the senator that squeezes Michael in the beginning of the movie, another Tom Hagen like Tom Hagen special here is he sets him up with a hooker. Yeah. And yep. drugs the senator, kills the hooker in the room and makes the senator yeah. think it was himself. Yeah. <laughs> ye, ye old dead hooker frame up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Tom Hagen is ruthless. Works yeah. every time, man. Yeah. Ruthless. Uh, That's right. Yeah. And this is when he, because Michael, we forgot to mention this, Michael brings Tom Hagen back and he says, you're the godfather now. You are acting as me. I have to disappear. I have to disappear for yeah. a little while. And that's when he goes to Cuba. Right. Right. Yeah. Yep. Uh, he does his whole thing. He goes and sees Roth and then goes to New York. But yeah, that's, York that's why goes, he recruises himself, right? Did you know what you yes, said? Yeah. 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 Because yeah. yeah. of the whole dead hooker frame up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's not a hypocrite he's been yeah squeezed himself he definitely right. makes himself look like yeah yeah oh the he mag, looks like mag, a magnanimous yeah. one yeah. well yeah he's he, right his I mean, words are hypocritical his words are hypocritical yeah. when we know that but he's been told what to do exactly <laughs> so he uh which is funny because recusing himself honestly looks bad enough yeah yeah because he makes a scene out of it right but that's not worse for him than being around with a dead hooker yeah i don't know no <laughs> yeah you're right yeah. but but no but i mean it's a small he's... price that senators pay for sure. the bad shit they've done like it's kind sure. of kind of a little wink it's a it's a little bit of penance yeah is yeah you're gonna but it's a small price sure for the bad shit he's done or didn't do yeah. and just thinks he's done. Yeah, he's done bad shit. He's done bad You're shit. You're naive if you think. Uh, that's true. <laughs> that's true. He probably paid some poor person to go to war for his son instead. Anyway. Um, <laughs> anyway, so, um, yeah. And um, so, yeah. So, the, the, the walls are kind of closing in on Michael. Yeah. You know, you've got pressure from the government. You've got another heavy hitter in his world that... Will strike at him. Yep. In, in at some, it's only a matter of time. Now, granted, Roth is kind of to the wind at this point after Cuba because he's trying to find safety in another country. Um, we do find out later one of those places he tries to get immunity is Israel, and they're like, "No, nah. <laughs> no, we're not. We're not going to have you." Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And they bounce him out back to the United States where he's going to be arrested. Right. But um Michael straight up lies to Congress. <laughs> yeah. They even try to call him out on it, but they don't really have anything, but they're going to have They have a star witness. They have a star witness. Frank. Frank is going to fill in the gaps and they'll be able to arrest Michael on perjury. Yes, or, that's well, the plan. Yeah, they will. They will suggest that. Yeah. To the uh, right. Although, if I were if I were Michael and Tom, 
Get somebody in the Justice Department on your side. Did you guys notice Harry Dean Stanton? And yes. Corsi? Okay. Most yeah. definitely. Yeah, yep. I figured you would. He's but. he's one of the guys who's got um, uh, Frank in witness protection. Yes. On, on the Army base. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, they show him another time. Actually, the first time in the theater or in the courtroom, I was like, "Hey, it's Harry Dean Stanton." I love it when well, he shows he, up. No, he's he's in he's on the army base. The first time they show him. Oh, I um, must have missed his, him. His face is a little obscure, but you can hear his voice. Okay, hmm. yeah. Um, I'm not that close to him that I could recognize <laughs> him just by voice. That's another. That's another uh, person who was born a 40 year old man. Yes. <laughs> oh yeah. He's yeah. probably like 22 in this movie. Yeah, like probably. <laughs> Everybody looked. 10 to 15 years older in the 70s and 80s yep. well well they yeah. all look 10 to 15 years older in two years <laughs> true it, it was really the craziest is, thing it really is wild because i watched the whole movie until the end the godfather not knowing that was diane keaton even <laughs> knowing she was in the movie <laughs> right and in the second movie i'm like that's diane keaton like i recognize that's her 1000 yeah because she she she's she looks different in the she looks one. completely like she's still almost like in the first one she almost like like she still has that like that baby fat on yeah, her face. Yeah, she hasn't fully Diane Keaton. She yet. has not fully Diane Keaton into wearing goofy hats and. She hasn't had her metamorphosis yet. <laughs> right, she hasn't met Woody Allen yet. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, take us away from Woody Allen, somebody, yeah. please. <laughs> Helgon, take us away. <laughs> well, so yeah, the, go ahead. Well, I was just gonna say, um, uh, yeah, at this point, who is who's the star witness, right? And that's when it cuts to the army base where they've got Frank on ice, not on ice, but on ice, you know, that yeah. he's, he's in protection. He's been in protection ever since the failed attempt on his life failed in air quotes. Um, and uh, he's going to testify against Michael because he believes Michael um, has, be- has betrayed him, has tried to kill him. Yeah. Yes. And at the same time, we learned shortly before this that that Kay had lost a baby. At least yeah. Tom Hagen tells her that Tell, tells, tells Michael, Michael that she yeah. lost a baby. Yeah, um, had a miscarriage, which has kind of a big reveal after the court case. So. Yep. Oh yeah, that that is all part of where they're headed as a couple. Yes. Um, because yeah, it's basically because she's with them in court, and she's behind them in court. Yep. But she's her. She's her, done. The yeah, she's done. The 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 gears are grinding. You yeah, said five. It's been ten or eleven, however long the however Godfather long two at takes this point. place, yeah. which is seems like years. I don't yeah. know how many. It's seven. It's seven. Seven years. Seven, seven years. years. It picks yeah. up seven years later. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So they might have done some makeup aging. They had to have. Well, maybe, but um, I think so, I think they definitely. I think you're right. You told me. I think we were chatting Pacino's about. Pacino's definitely. Makeup Pacino's too. got some makeup aging. Yeah. Sure. Um, but so then, um, it's subtle, but is there? Yeah. Yeah, and. There's another angle that's going on here, too, because I mentioned that that Michael has to go to his mom and ask him what, you know, what Papa did. Yeah. And that's because there's turmoil within the family, not within the organization, within the actual family, because Connie knows that he had Carlo killed. Oh, yeah. And she's pretty hot about that. Yep. And she's been running around just getting married blown money not yeah like right and she she's she's right and and michael tells her as such it's like well you know you're you've benefited from it basically yeah. um so you know it's uh so she's not happy with um with michael um and he knows that fredo has betrayed him yeah and uh, the whole thing could be crumbling from the inside very easily so you know so yeah so like you've got he's cornered basically he's got these three different opposing forces some from within some from without um some as big as the government and he's uh yeah i mean he's 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 got to now do he's got to do some bad stuff now well yeah and he he has a conversation his last conversation with fredo and he tells Fredo that he's dead to him. He's not welcome in the family business, in the family or whatever, at all. He's essentially excommunicated. He's like, when you come to visit your mother, you you let my people know a day in advance so I'm not here. Yeah. Right. And as long as our mother is alive, nothing will happen to you. Right. Yeah. Guess what happens? 
Mom dies. Mama dies. Now, there's, and this is, Connie's like, hey, get, put the shit with Fredo. She tries, she tries to intercede on his behalf. Right. And she's, she's trying to play bridge builder. She's trying to be the new mama. Yep. She's, who's the matriarch now. Which is funny because she becomes that. She does. (laughs) Most definitely. Yeah. Yeah. She becomes the mom father. Um, Sorry. I, I found that way too funny. <laughs> <laughs> but you had, I think Kay at this point has also told Michael that I didn't lose the baby. Yeah. It's I an aborted. abortion. I, it's an abortion because. Yeah, this all happens at the funeral. Yeah. 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 yeah before before the Fredo. Yeah, I guess it all happens. He's already at had the, the conversation with Fredo. You're but right. then at the funeral, he has a conversation with um, Connie and with Kay. So Michael does. So he finds out about the abortion. Um, that ruins him like yeah. ruins him it maybe it wasn't at the funeral but it was around i think it was a little it was before. short it was yeah. either right before or right after yeah yeah, yeah. i think it was yeah. slightly before but yeah. doesn't matter so he's got that oh it was that slightly is... before because she's at the funeral and they're very cold yes yeah. yeah 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 so she is so out now that she doesn't even want to bring another corleone into the world yeah um, and she and she wants a divorce she wants out completely so what started as protection of the family from michael's become decimation of the family yes there are people killing his offspring yeah because of who he is yep his brother has betrayed him like it's the ultimate like come down for a dude like yeah he's he's been leveled he's been ruined everything his father built has come crumbling down yes around him because michael didn't do things the family way right right like yep presumably you you reap what you sow um it's it's a yeah it's that double-edged sword right his his quest for legitimacy was what the things he had to tear down to make his family legitimate ruined his family but but also i think even if he didn't do that if he's if he just stayed if he if yeah i guess it depends on what what family you're talking about right. his his family that he built with k or the family Right. Both are, yeah. But both I, have crumbled around. He could have just had Kay and his family if he chose that path. Yes. But he chose a different path. Yes. And now he's losing both families. Yes. And yeah. three deals with that too. A little bit of what his aspirations does. It's the ultimate thing. Yep. Really for him, even though it's not done really well. But we'll talk about. <laughs> we'll talk that about later. that next week. We'll talk about that. <laughs> so um, yeah. So let's start. Uh, let, let's start tying the the threads together here. So. Um, Michael, there's going to be a star witness that's going to prove that Michael lied to Congress under oath. It's Frank. Yes. Frank comes in. He sees his brother and has a change of heart. And then, you know, like they start asking him questions like, hey, I don't know anything about that. What are you talking about? I don't know anything. Um, he then goes, um, you know, so now everything is in disarray there. So essentially... He has, um, he basically has has won that. He's 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 more or less gotten free of that. Uh, Tom makes a big scene about getting an apology from the U.S. government, which is great. Yeah. Um, you know, making his own scene. Um, Tom's the best. Yeah, he is. Uh, Robert Duvall is just. I know why he's not in Godfather Part Three. He was in Days of Thunder the uh, same year. He probably also read the script. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I'm out. Well, did he not read the Days of Thunder script? I'm just kidding. Yeah, but that was fun. <laughs> He's having fun there. Um, anyway, um, <laughs> no, it's, that's, that's me being facetious about why he's not in it. But, <laughs> yeah. uh, but the, just oddly, they came out the same year. Anyway. Um, so was this a threat? Was it, it, it plays as we brought your brother here. We're going to kill him if you don't. I think it, that's interesting. Um, or did his brother come to threaten him? I, I like, it, you don't go against the family, buddy. I think it's a reminder. And I think it's a reminder in whatever way he wants to take it. And both work. Both work, yeah. right? Yeah. Because I don't think his brother would come on his own free will to be threatened. He was a big, he's they, a big mafia dude and a Cosa Nostra dude in, yeah. in Italy. Yeah. Yeah interesting i was just curious what you guys thought right because he doesn't even speak english right Mm-mm. yeah he had to he just has to look at him but, <laughs> right. but, but but you're right uh, he does mention in his conversation with tom later that um you know he he was tougher than all of them 
Yeah. Right. He could have, he could have been, he could have been Arizona a boss family. here. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, I think, I think, uh, it set his priorities straight. Yeah. Right. And so, yeah, so he, he gets out of that, uh, to kind of continue that story with Frank. He's still at the army base being protected and Tom comes to see him and they have a big old cigar together yeah. and he's like, you're a big fan of history, of history you know, and, um, you know what you know, the Romans would do when they would take their shot at the, at the Caesar and fail. He's like, yeah, yeah. And then the next day he, he slits his wrist yeah. in the bathtub. So Tom told him you're done you 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 better do it yourself or we're gonna do it to you and this is kind of interesting where the story of the first godfather michael is is not to be batman -y, but he's vengeance yeah at the end of the first godfather in this one he's dealing with people he loves yeah he the people that he has to kill that even the ones that aren't family are people he's respected and loved. So it's kind of like a slow introspective burn. Oh, this is, that's first... exactly what the last shot of the movie is. Oh yeah. 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 Versus the first one where he's proud of what he's doing. The second one he is, he's hurt. He's hurt. Yeah. Well, there's a, there's it's a really interesting, like, yeah. Dichotomy. I keep using that word. I think I'm using it right. The, yeah, that's how you are there. There is station. <laughs> There's a reinforcement of the end of the first Godfather as well with with Kate. So or Kay, sorry, not Kate. Um, when she comes to visit the children, and Connie's like, "You gotta go, you gotta go." He's gonna be here, and he shows up right before she leaves, and she's in the door frame. Yep, and he just walks to her, and he closes the door. Yeah, on her. it's uh, she's it's just like, there to get doors closed. He on her. Yeah, right. He closed the door <laughs> on her at the end of the first Godfather. That was separating one part of his life from her, and now he's closed the last door on her. Yep. Yeah. And and she's out of her uh, out of his life. Yeah. For now. For now. Until but she, she, she just script. pulls him back in. <laughs> she pulls him back in. Yeah. Um, that's one of the only things that works for me in the third movie, though, is their relationship. Yeah. Yep. The um, yeah. So then, um, so okay. So one one problem is is handled. Um, for Roth, well, he's going to be at LaGuardia and he's going to be heavily mm. guarded. It's the JFK Jack Ruby moment. Yeah, Ruby. pretty much. And it's like, so how are we going to get to him? Ah, we got an idea on this. Um, they just dress a guy up as a, as an, as a reporter. It is. It's totally Jack. Yeah. Ruby. And he just shoots him yeah. and then just runs off. Yeah. Which is. Yeah, like the first movie doesn't have a whole lot of suicide missions. The second two this do one have does. a lot. Yeah, and and that's and that's, it's, that's I think that's worth pointing out because I thought about that too. Yeah. Well, what's I, the story behind each one of those? Because that's a guy that they have to that they have to press. They got something on him that's a favor. The and, guy who kills Roth. Well, yeah, the guy who kills Roth. Later, the guy who kills. Um, the archbishop i think yeah two or three i mean th that's part of the in the trenches stuff that this movie doesn't show you that would honestly make these people even well, more repugnant right how do you get a guy like that to do that it's Wait, not didn't, loyalty didn't no it's didn't not fucking mean, loyalty well, well we need to talk about that scene in three because i i think i know who that person is and of course he's gonna do that i forget who it was okay we'll was, talk about it in three there's a guy in the plane uh, who's got the the gun in his isn't that that guy yeah we'll, 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 we'll figure that out it. um anyway so the um so yeah so basically i love it too the guy runs off the cop says freeze and the guy goes huh <laughs> keep running yeah keep running uh, he has no chance <laughs> well but keep running do you maybe give a little a little further along yeah, yeah, yeah you have you have at least 20 more seconds of life <laughs> instead of going huh uh huh no, what do you want? Kablamo. Kablamo. Yeah. Anyway, um, so then. Um, the big one? The big one. We and bet. this one's sad. It is sad. It's really sad. Because Fredo, I don't want to be Fredo's buddy. No. Nope. But he's such a loser. He seems like such a small little fish. Yeah. Um, he's so weak. So stupid. Yeah. That you almost feel sorry for him. And he's sitting there with. Uh, Anthony and they're going to go fishing and you know he's he's just trying to talk to his nephew and he's like oh you know 
Um, you know how I catch all these fish? I always uh, say a Hail Mary. God, I hate that line. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. It was, came off real cheesy. Well, maybe. it's a but it's it, something afraid, I would say. Yeah. yeah, it is. Exactly. And, you know, like Anthony's like, yeah, whatever. You know. Yeah. Uncle Fredo, you're a loser. Anyway. <laughs> um, well, I hate to say this, but if the whole litter was born at the same time. Oh, he would be the one cut out. He would be killed. <laughs> right. He would, he would never be cold. Lived, he would have never lived this long. He would have been killed for the betterment of the litter. Of, of the family. Right. And it, it's totally like kind of reinforced right in this well in, in sort of a way it's, also it's, is like, i agree it's a calling yeah yeah, yeah because yeah. the veto gave him the only job he thought he could do which is go out to vegas get go entertain away. people get drunk have yeah. fun right not a part of this business right exactly unfortunately what that did though was um it aligned him with bad people it aligned him with bad pe- people but it also allowed the corleone name to be weakened yes and it also because gave, people like Mo Green didn't have the respect that they should. Well, yeah, have. No, he slapped right. him around like a yeah. bitch. Yeah, it's it, yeah, it's yeah. So, um, but it also gave Fredo the necessary confidence to do the stupid thing he does. Right, which is because he, stupid he confidence. More, and I hate saying this because I want anyone to believe in themselves. But for the purpose of this story, it's a bad thing that Fredo has any kind of confidence at all. Well, yeah, no, yeah. it's stupid confidence. I mean, yeah. there, there's good confidence and there's stupid confidence, yeah. right? Like, well, there's, he's also probably been told by his sister that it's okay. I've smoothed things over. Right. Connie is is running interference for yeah. him, um, which is not necessarily bad for Connie. Connie's doing what Connie thinks she should be doing, what she's always done between the brothers. Right. You know, and because her brothers are wildly different people. <laughs> yeah. Um, we see that later uh, in a flashback. So, yeah. Um, so, Michael basically is like, yeah, no, Anthony, you can't go fishing. We got to go out or whatever. You got to go. Your father's leaving. You got to come. Yeah. You got to come with me. Yeah. And um, and Fredo's like, oh, okay, whatever. I'm we'll still, still go fishing. <laughs> yeah. This isn't awkward <laughs> or weird or suspicious. And he just gets plugged in the back yeah. of the head while Michael watches. While Michael watches, and um, this has an immeasurable effect on Michael. Yes, um, that we see that plays out in three. But you know, like he's sitting there alone, uh, you know, uh, on the you know next to the lake, and he's thinking about like uh, basically it's like the day after Pearl Harbor. He's joined the, the Marines, which pisses Sonny off. Yeah. Unbelievably. Yeah, so they have a flashback <laughs> to end the movie, right? Right. And this is when he tells Tom and Sonny and um, Fredo. Fredo that yeah, well, and also it's the day that Connie met Carlo. Yes, Sonny introduces them, which is ironic as fuck. Yeah. Well, and also it's, he treats them both like idiots. Yeah. It's like, why don't you go look at the fucking tree? Get out of here. Yeah. We were talking about business or whatever. Yeah, so Sonny doesn't like that Michael's joining the Army. Is there an Army or Marines? Marines. 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 Um, Tom is incredulous, and the only one that shows any oh, measure God, of support is Fredo. Is Fredo. And then he gets yeah. slapped by Sonny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is fun because he, you're he, seeing... He reaches out to shake his hand. And he's like, fuck yep. uh, get the fuck out of here. Yeah, and yeah, he's... Um, yeah, and now he just killed that one person who yep. stood up for him, who, yep. who essentially, I mean, that would be like, you know, it's the one guy in the family of of uh, of um, objectors who would say thank you for your service. But it's also, you know, it's, it's, also, it's kind of it's kind of like the of mice of men ending, you know, a yeah. little bit. But yeah. it's also reinforcement that Fredo never got it. He yeah. never understood what right. any of it was for. Like Michael ruined the family plan. Yeah. By going off to the Marines. Right. Right. And yeah, as much as as much as Vito would say in the first one that Michael's not a part of this, you know, that's not what his plan was. However, I think Vito was smart enough to understand if he goes off and joins the the Marines, he comes back. He's a hero that's electable. Sure. You know, so he knows how to change that plan. Now, Tom tells him, it's like your father and I talked about your future. And it's like, wait. You and my father talked about my, my future. future. It's my future. And, you know, it's like he's kind of showing a little bit like I'm going to go my own way yeah. here. Yeah. Which, of course, 
that's what these movies are about. And him we'll going his know, own way. We'll never know how Vito reacts because Marlon Brando refused to come back and <laughs> right. shoot a scene. He just came to the door. Yeah, it's, yep. uh, it was a surprise I mean, party. He was, he was actually supposed to come back, but he just didn't show up. <laughs> That's interesting. Yeah, he he was uh, he was mad. I guess it's a good time to tell the story. He was mad about how Paramount treated him and buying back his points. Yeah, okay. Um, so the story goes, um, Brando needed 100k to pay his taxes that year, and he he worked on Godfather for scale. His agent came to Paramount, asked for another 100k, and they said, "Well, we're not going to just give it to you outright. We'll buy back his points in the movie." And um, his points in the movie would have kicked in at fifty million, or yeah, fifty million gross, and um, it would have earned him uh, eleven million dollars, like in, 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 in royalties and everything. Until the day he died, he would have it would have been he lost eleven million dollars. Um, yeah, so uh, he fired like all of his people <laughs> after that. He fired his agent, his accountant, them all. Well, he does return, and he also held held a grudge against Paramount. He does return in the Freshman. Yeah, yeah, he does. <laughs> he does. Yeah, he probably had a little more juice then. We'll have to see how much he got paid for the freshman. Right, no doubt. That was pretty good. I would like to hear Matthew Roderick's <clears throat> stories of working with him. I would too. Um, but anyway, um, so. But also, one other note here James Kahn came back um, to reprise his role of Sonny in that scene for the same amount of money he made for the entire first movie. That's hilarious. Yep. Wow. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Which um, probably wasn't a ton, but James Kahn was one of the only names at the time the godfather came out like marlon brandon was a name but he was a infamous name khan was a pretty big star yeah when that movie came out in fact so big a star they wanted uh, the studio wanted him to be um michael michael yeah, yeah. well yeah he, he had too much um he had too much chest hair for that <laughs> yeah he, he had back hair. <laughs> back hair <laughs> he would not have been believed. i've been i've been turned he have been. He's, I've, per, he's perfect sonny perfect yeah yep oh yeah he, he can't play soft and quiet no I mean, even when he had a soft and quiet scene in Thief, yeah, it was terrifying. Oh, Cop- Coppola was one hundred percent correct. And yeah. Coppola didn't want him at all, but um, but he was he was perfect. Yeah. yeah, Um, so yeah, so basically, um, you know, this movie ends with uh, Michael having to kill his father's son. Yeah, I killed my father's son. And um, that's something that you don't typically ever think that you do. No, it's Cain and Abel. Pretty much. Um, and But, you know, I mean, for now, at least, the Corleones are going to continue thriving. Yeah. At least for now. They still have their, they still have their, their Vegas family business. Um He's still semi-connected to New York, so he's... He's out from these, under Roth. Some of these things will be problems for him later on. Yes. Yeah. Yes. When we talk about Godfather 3. Next. Yes. Um, before we wrap things up, I do want to talk one thing about John Cazale. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, he played Fredo. Um, Is this about him in the movies that he was in yes yeah it's he such, was in, such an interesting like weird factoid he's in five movies in seven years yep um he died in 1978 from lung cancer i believe he yes. smoked quite a bit um <clears throat> his girlfriend no, a nobody named meryl street yeah stayed by him the whole time um yeah they yeah. made um they made the deer hunter together yes and um was it al pacino who actually said that he couldn't believe the like he he the, the dedication she showed him was unlike anything he'd yeah. ever seen or something like that. I, I don't know who attributed the quote, but that, I've heard a similar yeah. story. He was very sick on the set of Deer Hunter. Yeah. He barely made it through that movie. But his five movies are The Godfather, The Conversation, The Godfather Part Two, Dog Day Afternoon, and The Deer Hunter. All yep. five nominated for Best Picture. Yep. Wild. Um, Never made a movie that wasn't nominated for Best Picture. He was in archival footage yep. in Godfather Part Three. Yep. And what was that? Nominated for Best Picture. Yep. Yep. So, yeah. It was nominated for Best Picture. It was. Holy shit. It was up against uh, Goodfellas, Dances with Wolves, Ghost, and I... Was Awakenings the fifth? I could be. That sounds right. The fifth one? Wow, good year for Bobby D. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, Anyway, so yeah, every movie he appeared in, nominated for Best Picture. Um, He was never nominated for an Oscar. 
yeah. despite having roles like particularly in this one as Fredo um, or in Dog Day Afternoon. I mean, Dog Day Afternoon is amazing. Yeah. He particularly is amazing. Yeah. Um, that's a great flick. So, yeah, but uh, he was only nominated for one Golden Globe. Mm-hmm. For Dog Day Afternoon. For Dog Day Afternoon. <laughs> right. Yeah. But that's, um, but yeah, that was one that a lot of people think that was a, a very sad uh, oh, yeah. Tremend- exclusion. Tremendous loss, too. Oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, imagine all the other best pictures he yeah. could have been in. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I mean, he probably could have been in Reds, <laughs> maybe Chariots of Fire, Gandhi. Who knows? Who needs Ben Kingsley who when knows? you can get John Cazale? I mean, he was, his hair was, was trending in that way. Yeah, sure was. Yeah. Sure was. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, no, interesting guy. Um, yeah. You know, but yeah, he was only, I mean, he was he was on stage before being in movies. Yep. But, um, but yeah, he only made five movies and they were five pretty significant ones. Yeah, it's a pretty good legacy. All right. All right. Godfather 3 next week. Woo! Let's do I'm it. excited. Let's do it. I'm excited. I, yeah. Close out the trilogy. <laughs> Me too. With, um, there's lots to talk about. There's, that, there's no shortage of things to talk about. Yeah. I God think Father we're going to probably talk a lot about Andy Garcia. <laughs> yep. <laughs> because we should. We should. Um, yeah, it's kind of it's kind of funny that people don't really think. There's a couple of things that are kind of funny about the Godfather movies. First, um, when these first two movies came out, Al Pacino was a heartthrob. The decades have been rough. <laughs> Ooh, ah. <laughs> right. I mean, he was, he's, he was a handsome man. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but um, he, you, I mean, if you wa- if you don't know who Al Pacino is and you watched Godfather and then watched uh, Jack and Jill next to each other. <laughs> Why you would ever watch those two back to back? I don't know. I would say he's almost unrecognizable between the Godfather and Heat. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, Godfather and Godfather Part Three, he doesn't really look like he's True. the same guy. Um, he doesn't but, act like the same guy either. <laughs> Jason has same issues. Char- same character, anyway. Okay, fair enough. Doesn't act like the same character. But I guess that kind of makes some sense. We'll we'll talk about it. Yeah. So, um, but anyway. Um, and then, like, I mean, Andy Garcia was a rising star in 1990. I mean, he was in Black uh, Black Rain. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, he was in good shit. 1990, yeah. I'll have to look up what else he was doing. Let's save that for, yeah, save it for, for next week. So, um, Chuck, you know, folks could follow and subscribe to us. Yes. On filmseizure.com they can get it to us at where where are we oh, where okay, are I'm, we? I'm failing uh, the, twitter i don't even know if you know where you are right now <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I, I, had a, I didn't i didn't expect you to ask me. okay you never fair enough. asked me blogger spotify wait youtube wait. okay hang on a second i'll fix it <laughs> <laughs> so you can subscribe to us <laughs> <laughs> we're on face space <laughs> <laughs> my book um my twits um <laughs> no so uh, you can you can follow us at facebook twitter instagram yeah you got that yep okay you can subscribe to us several places spotify, spotify tune in soundcloud yeah. audible um YouTube. stitcher youtube we put stuff on youtube um google and apple okay i'm fixed for next time you're fixed for next time <laughs> yeah. okay we're putting the fix in um but yeah i mean that's where you're going to find out when things happen on our uh, various uh, episodes and whatnot um at filmseizure.com you can also not only listen to film seizure but you can also listen to my show monster mondays next monday the 195th episode of of monster mondays insanity it's insanity but it's dracula ad 1972 Mm. oh yeah that's a good one is it it's not i think it's fun it's okay it's fun i mean carolyn monroe is in it it's fun it's fun yeah all right anyway um so that's gonna happen there this uh so both of those of filmseizure.com all those places i said that you can listen to the show at um then this weekend 
on my website, bmovieanima.com. On Friday, I will have my written review of Old. I'm not looking forward oh. to, to reading that or to watching that. I haven't. I, I I hope it's good for you guys to read. I hope you look forward to reading it I because will, it's probably going to be torturous for I me. I will be be interested in reading that. Okay. Well, do see that you do. Um, speaking of, see that you also do, Jason, show up in the season finale of B Movie Anima of the series the very next day. It's a good one. It's a good one. It's a good one. It's a good one. While well, you're going to be in it. Oh yeah. It's Fear and Desire, yeah. Stanley Kubrick's first movie. And we don't know how good it's going to be yet because we haven't recorded my part. It's going to be great. <laughs> it's going to be great. It's going to be, 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 be great. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. Never forget. Did I just see that's getting a... Fr- is it that that's getting a 4K release? Probably from Kino. Yeah. Yeah. Think, they, they're so. the ones who restored it. So, yeah. So, do those things and uh, we will uh, forever be in your debt, except for we probably don't want to kill mob guys. No. But we'll be in debts in other ways. Like, we just will think <laughs> fondly of you. We're like Enzo the Baker. We'll just stand at the stairs if you need us. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll also... Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm a little fredo we A little bit. A little bit. More like Alfredo. <laughs> yeah. You like Alfredo. <laughs> uh, anyway. So, okay. Until next week when we wrap up this Godfather trilogy... I am Jeff Harbuckle. I'm Chuck Moore. I'm Jason Oliver, and you have been listening to Film Seizure.